Now here are Jordan Moore and John Jackson. To a new season of Trojans Live on ESPN LA 710. Tonight we have a huge lineup to kick things off, starting with the head coach, of course, Clay Helton. We'll be joined later by the captain, Uchenna Nuoso, newly named. The athletic director, Lynn Swan, is on the show later, as well as national champion women's soccer head coach, Kadani McAlpine. I am Jordan Moore. This is John Jackson. JJ, it's the best time of year. Hope and hype in the <laughs> air, certainly, as uh, we count down the kickoff. What's it going to be this year for the Trojans? You know, I know we have Coach Stan sitting next to us, and I'm tempted just to ask him to for a repeat of last year. You know, even listening to Pete in the in the in the in the, in the intro, you know, get you sort of hyped to just do the same that was thing again. Good. I know I know the expectations are a little bit higher, but. Um, I'll take a repeat of last year. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll bring in the head coach, and we'll see what he thinks. 16-7 and seven is the USC head coach. is Clay Helton. Get ready for your next big game. Let Ralph's help make game time a little easier. Place your order today for ready-made party platters at your neighborhood Ralph's Deli or at ralphs.com slash order online. All right, Coach, you have it, – it always, feel, always feels like a long off season. We have spring football, then there's summer, and now we go into camp. Camp was an extra week longer. Is your team prepared? Do you feel like you 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 have them ready to go for week one? Yeah, definitely. It was it was a really good training camp, a healthy training camp, thank goodness. And and really, the extra week provided us a chance to really get in routine. We yeah. spent uh, the past two weeks just basically playing mock games, almost like an NFL preseason, yeah. to be honest with you. So Monday through Saturday has been exactly Exactly like they're feeling this week, and um, it's been a good camp. I like where our kids are at. I can't wait to watch them play and get to evaluate exactly the reality <laughs> of too. it. But uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's been a it's been a very pleasing camp for me. You know, do a little comparison for us between last year at this time and where your team is at now. I know mm -hmm. we, you know we've talked briefly about you know last year it was just trying to get everybody on the same page, but mm -hmm. this year you know this team and mm -hmm. even staff has taken a step a step forward yeah you know as soon as we got done with the rose bowl i wrote a couple things down to how we we're going to be successful this year and the first thing was consistency of staff and especially in the coordinators and to be able to have clancy back t back john baxter back to be able to have all three phases the same three systems the ability to have the same terminology the kids are playing so much faster and the communication is faster just feels so much more comfortable than walking into that first game last year now we do have 24 newcomers that are learning it and we're onboarding them as fast as we can but from the overall veteran standpoint it, it feels so much more cleaner jj talked about expectations from a fan side there seems to be a little bit of a fear of expectations. They've been burned before, but but you welcome it. Yeah, no question. I, I you know, I've had the good fortune that this is going to be my eighth season here and understand exactly what SC is about. And that's the reason, you know, when we entered spring training, I, I went to our kids and said, hey, guys, wasn't that some unbelievable memories we just had? Uh, and everybody shook their head. <laughs> and then the next question was, is, are you satisfied? And not a hand rose uh, because we understand. We understand what it, we're about. It's Pac-12 championships, national championships. And if you don't like it, you know, don't take the job. <laughs> well, that's what we all came here for. And, you know, we don't see the expectations as an obligation. We see it as an opportunity. And uh, here's another great opportunity to represent SC and the tradition of excellence that's behind it. You know, with – success comes a lot of reward mm -hmm. and you know in the off season a lot of the players have been benefactors of that mm -hmm. success you know it particularly being Sam now a Heisman Trophy candidate and you know mm -hmm. all the other guys you know Cam's you know all these other guys have elevated themselves mm -hmm. into what potentially could be a great individual season for them if the team performs mm -hmm. well how have you managed that in terms of you know, the players, making sure they stay humble enough to understand mm -hmm. that it was the hard work that they put in that's going to get them back to where they want to be. Yeah, it's the reality of, of how success is, is based. It's team success is so much more important than the individual success. Individual success is a byproduct of what the team can accomplish. They don't hand out Heisman Trophy <laughs> to six and six football teams. Right, right. Um, <laughs> they don't hand out Thorpe Award winners to Dory Jackson on a bad, if you're a bad football team. Um, you know, and that's one of the things I talked with our kids. You look at those kids, those older seniors that played last year, 14 of those young men went on to the NFL. Yeah. You know, five drafted, nine free agents, and not all were starters. 
Some of them were special teams. Some of them were backups, the two backup receivers. They got opportunities because of the team's success, and um, that's our goal. Uh, that's always been our motto. That's our culture is we more worry about winning as a team and let the accolades come at a further date. Yeah, and so much talk about your quarterback off the field. How about on the field? What's been the focus for Sam Darnold as the centerpiece of this offense and, and, and you trying to build it around him? Yeah, really, you know, we've taken the next step with him, and you saw it, you know, later in the season about us kind of giving him the opportunity to change some calls, to re-slide protections. His knowledge of the game is where I thought his greatest growth could be, being able to ID fronts, ID coverages, seeing rotation, see where pressure's coming from, get us in the right place play you know and now he's having that capability where we give him menu and he can call his own he can call his own number he can call his own shot and not only does that make you a better offense in this pro style offense but it's going to help him for the future um it make it just a, it's a progression of a, a pro style quarterback how much does that amaze you from the part where he was right when he took over to where he's at and how fast it's happened. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the thing that sort of gets me is that, you know, I remember <laughs> interviewing him at San Clemente. It is not mm -hmm. the same guy <laughs> that we see right now. Mm -hmm. And it just happened so fast, even for me yeah. watching it. What is, what is it for you? He's the best. He's one of the best reactionary players that I've ever seen uh, to be able to anticipate what's going to happen. I don't know if it comes from being a point guard in basketball, <laughs> running fast breaks or, or what it is, but he can – He's starting now to understand exactly why those things happen, and it's really even improved his game even more. Um, but he, he is one of the best reactionary, anticipatory throwers um, I've been around in my career. Well, he can't do it by himself, and so a lot of talk uh, of camp was – Who's going to replace Darius and Juju? That's yeah. 126 catches last mm -hmm. year between those two guys. Do you have a sense, or is that mm -hmm. still a, a work in progress and maybe you need to see who has chemistry you know, when mm -hmm. the lights are on on Saturdays? Yeah, you know, one of the things that I, I told our team, and I think it's really um, evident in the wide receiving core, our strength this year is really in our numbers. Yeah. You, you know, when you look at that wide out core, it, it is deep, uh, and it has a chance to – be a, a basketball team on grass, to be honest with yeah. you. You could put three wides out there and Stephen Mitchell, uh, Deontay, and, and Jalen Green, and then immediately come back with a, with a Tyler Vaughns and a Michael Pittman and a Vellis Jones or a Josh Amortabebe or, or um, a Joseph Lewis or Randall Grimes. So our strength right now is in numbers. I don't know if there's a superstar in the group. We'll see. But, I, you know, to start off these first couple games, we'll need them collectively as a whole to perform. And we'll, we know we're going to go through some growing pains. When you walk in that stadium and there's 90,000, you know, <laughs> strange things happen. You go in that huddle and you look in each person's eyes and you go, yep, he's ready. Yep, he's ready. <laughs> oh, God, dear, the headlights. Okay, it, you know, we got to let him progress a little bit. Yeah. But, but that's part of growing up. That's part of being a college football player is living and learning, and, and we're willing to do that with our kids. Yeah, I have no worries about the receivers. They're all always ready to play, mm -hmm. coach, in my book. <laughs> um, but what I have, do have a concern about is the offensive line. You mm -hmm. lose three three good mm -hmm. offensive linemen from a year ago, three mm -hmm. starters, and now you have to replace them. Mm -hmm. How do we sit there? Yeah, no question. I, you know, I'm, we're so fortunate to have three kids that have played so much football. I think everybody forgot about Toa Lomadon. Uh, yeah, that's and, right. And he's maybe had the best camp of anybody on our football team. Um, he's going to be our left tackle. Uh, he's played it before. His athleticism totally shined through. It's going to allow some young kids to be able to continue to grow up, um, like an Austin Jackson, like an Andrew Voorhees, a Clayton Johnson. It's going to allow those guys to grow up. Um, you know, when we've got a uh, we've got a solid rock right there in the middle with Nico Fala, who's proven, who, who's really earned that that opportunity to be our center. And then Viani Talamova has started every game for the last three years. Yep. And then you look at the other two. You look at the other two that have come in. Chuma Doga has played and started in games, and this is his third season. Same thing Gosh. with Chris Brown. They're going into their third season. So it's just their opportunity now. It's not like you run. I remember a couple of years ago when we were looking at going, oh, my God, we got three true freshmen in there. <laughs> That's right. The, these are grown men and mature men that have played football. So I'm actually um, very positive about that group. And it's another group that's deep. And uh, it's going to allow – it's filled with some experience up front and then some talented youth right behind. And that's that's what you want at, the, at each position. A lot of talk about the USC offense. We'll get into the USC defense when we come back on Trojans Live.
we go back to the lab with Jordan Moore and John Jackson on Trojans Live. Back on Trojans Live, this is Jordan Moore, John Jackson, and the head coach of USC football, Clay Helton, joining you before week one, counting down to USC versus Western Michigan, Saturday, 2.15, nice little afternoon kickoff, going to be a hot one at the Coliseum probably, Uh, but your defense will enjoy it, Coach, because I just get a sense there's a lot of confidence in that room. You talked earlier about continuity, every defensive coach back, so many players back Mm -hmm. defensively, and while... There's so much hype around the offense, particularly because of your quarterback. It really looks like that defense is the one that, that could come out early on in the season and be at its best. Yeah, defense wins championships, and I thought it was a huge statement by our team. You know, you give them the honor to vote for – usually yeah. you vote for two offensive captains, two defensive captains, and it works out that <laughs> way. But in the voting, I mean, there were three defensive captains and, and um, between Uchenna Owosu and, and Cam Smith and Chris Hawkins. It speaks volumes. Uh, it's, a, it's an older group. It's a very experienced group, and I really have loved how the leadership has rose. You lose, you lose a Stevie Tuiko Lovato, and then all of a sudden there's Uchenna, and, and there's yep. Port Augustine capturing that front. You lose a Michael Hutchings, and then all of a sudden Cam Smith, you know, just takes over the linebacking core. And then you got a seasoned veteran in Chris Hawkins that has just basically adopted the entire DB room and is teaching yeah. from older guys to younger guys exactly what to do and getting everybody lined up. So, um, you know, second year in the system, I've been really, really pleased with what Clancy has done uh, in training camp. Um, some new wrinkles, too, uh, which I'm excited to see. And uh, our kids are just playing extremely confidently on that side of the ball. You know, the other thing you see when you watch the defense play during practice is, you know, like you talked about offensively, the amount of depth that's there. And I know that Clancy, you know, likes to use different mm-hmm. people in different mm-hmm. situations. He, you know, he loves to, you know, keep fresh bodies mm-hmm. on the field. How, how, how much is that part of it going to help this USC mm-hmm. team in 2017? Yeah, you know, I, I think of the major difference between what I felt this time last year and right now is really up front. Yep. It, you know, I feel there's just so many big bodies up front right now. A lot of them are young. Uh, you know, you look at a Marlin, you look at a Brandon Peely, a Jay Tufeli, yeah, um, but you feel that youth and, and the size has just taken off. Even a Liam Jimmins, a Christian Rector, but now they're sitting at 290, 295. Yeah. I mean, they've just grown into to large men <laughs> ready to play. Um, but in, uh, last year, I was like, oh, my gosh, if we get one injury, Lord help us. Uh, but <laughs> Now, you know, you just feel the depth. I think it's going to keep us fresher as a total unit um, and and really make us more effective. And that's one thing that has really stood out to me is the size, exactly what you said. It looks like, you know, they walk out of the locker room, they walk on the field, Mm -hmm. they look (laughs) like Mm -hmm. they can play. Is it by design? Did you recruit that way to just get bigger Mm -hmm. overall up front from a strategic standpoint? Yeah, so when we evaluated our football team and and really – took where we want to go to, which is a national championship. We really felt, you know, after leaving last season, um, even playing that likes of Alabama, that we had to improve our offense and defensive front from a size standpoint. Um, And we really made an investment. Um, You look at five offensive linemen, five defensive linemen in that last class with a lot of size. You know, Brandon Peely's a 340-pound dancing polar bear. He He can do a back handspring. Yes. I (laughs) saw it on the Internet. It's amazing how he dunks the ball. It's unbelievable. But but you you look at the men that have come on board, and we understand that to get to where we want to get, to um it's always nice to have the skill it's right. always nice I, to have the skill <laughs> but but to win championships you're going to have to win in the trenches and that's where our investment will always be well you're listening to the head coach clay helton here on trojans live up next we're going to be joined by uchenna nuosu and uchenna is part of this pass rush that really has me excited coach because this is a passing league mm-hmm. it's become yes. a passing sport mm-hmm. and you, you can't let those guys cover forever but yeah. all of a sudden when you have uchenna and Porter mm-hmm. and Rasheem, and then you've got some guys behind them too. You know, yeah. What do you think you can accomplish out of this rush this season? Well, you, you saw it last year, and you see, and you mentioned it, this league is a passing league, and the quarterbacks are so effective. Yep. I, I mean, um, they're so talented. And my last vision is uh, I'm such a fan of Jake Browning and what he brings to the table for Washington. And if you allow him to sit in that pocket – he will dice you uh, for a ton of yards. And I, I go back and think of what Porter and Chenna and, and our blitz package and four-man rush did in that game, and it really
really is what won us the game. And it's going to be a huge staple for us this year. Again, getting to the quarterback, stopping the run yep. um, first, and then being great on third down with pass rush. And that was kind of our MO last year and needs to be the same this year. You know, a lot has been made about what these guys have done in the offseason, especially mm -hmm. Port, Port, Port Augustin, for example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's other guys to talk about as well. Um, has it been a different vibe in the offseason for these guys? Because it – you know, from what we hear, what we see, it seems like it's just a different off-season temperament. Yeah, you know, we really have talked about, you know, what we do in the off-season. The guys are not seeing it as a sacrifice anymore. They're seeing it as an investment, <laughs> you know, an investment of where we want to go. We, it, was, it was a lot easier to get to number three than go from three to one. Right. And that's where they want to be. And the fact of the matter is we have not won a Pac-12 championship since 2008. So, you know, we, we have a lot to accomplish, and we knew there was a lot of hard work to be able to get there. And these guys dove right in. I, I love them because they're, they're realists. They believe in brutal honesty um, and they don't like to be patted on the back they like to be coached and they like to be coached hard um, and they know that's where it's going to take them where they want to go you know you mentioned the name of Dory Jackson earlier we talked about the back end of the defense we also talked about special teams mm -hmm. proving harder to replace in, in which one because he really was so dynamic as the Jim Thorpe award winner but also you know single-handedly basically winning the Notre Dame game when he had the ball in his hands mm -hmm. yeah you know you, you look at what he did and, and it was so special and I always said that skill set of kickoff returner and punt returner yeah. is two different skill sets. Yeah. Um, you know, Adoree had the fearlessness of not stutter stepping on kickoff return, but then having that ability on punt return to make the first one miss and be able to find the hole and explode. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll probably have to do returner by committee this year. We've established – Three really good ones that we that we like right now, and a Jane A. Harris and Jack Jack Jones, um, and Velas Jones, and, and you know um, we'll put those three out there. I think two of them will be our kickoff returners, one will be our punt returner, and um, and go from there. Um, but uh, they've they've done a great job of working very tirelessly at it, and Coach Pax has has worn them out with it. But it's hard to replace them to Dory Jackson. I've only been around one in 23 years, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, we generational have, talent. Yeah, we have some kids that um, that are going to, I think, fill that role nicely by committee. All right, and so now this is the, probably the toughest question. Kicking-wise, we've had some mm -hmm. ups and downs during the dur during the summer. Where do we sit now in terms of uh, the kicking situation? Yeah, you, you know, coming into coming into camp, um, I, I was a big fan of Michael Brown, and, and here comes Chase coming in and has really um, competed ex extremely well uh, to the point where I'm still looking at it this week, to be honest with you. Um, and Chase has kicked extremely well the past two weeks, so they're still competing. I, I'm going to settle in after. After Wednesday, uh, to go ahead and let them know who will be in the opening ball game. But I want to be able to watch them one or two more days. It's um, somebody has a hot streak, and then it <laughs> seems like the other one has a hot streak. But whoever's the best in 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 the moment or at this point, whoever can help our team right now is going to be the kicker. I'll announce it after Wednesday's practice. Will it be a situation where you think that the, all the kicking duties go to one, or could it possibly even be split up kickoffs versus field? Goals? Um, I, I think to be honest with you, with the with the kickoff, I think Mike has been a little bit more consistent okay. uh, right now. Um, you know, if I, if I had to, and I'll talk to Bax this week, but just from my eye test, um, he's he's looking very consistent. Chase has done a nice job, um, but he has he he's kicked several out of the end zone, um, which you know, I'd rather have that than than have to cover a <laughs> kickoff ever. Right. Um, but he he looks confident in that area. The field goal is still up for grabs, okay. and that's that's where I've got to make a decision here. In the next couple days. Well, a lot to talk about this week. There'll be even more to talk about next week. Coach, of course, join us each week. It's a big time opponent. This is not just your mm -hmm. average, you know, opening game. Just get out there and, and, oh, and warm things up. This is a team that went 13 no last year in the regular season. So Western Michigan coming to the Coliseum. We'll break them down a little bit later with JJ. First, it's a countdown to kickoff with Mito. Switch watches, Swiss, Swiss watches since 1918, the official timekeeper of USC Athletics. Be the first to own the Fight On limited edition timepiece. True Trojan fans, visit shopmido.com slash USC. That's shopmido, M-I-D-O dot com slash USC. As promised, the captain of the USC football Trojans is next. It's Uchenna Nuosu on Trojans Live. Be the first to ask yourself, I always think, because being a 